Hello everybody, it is Mike's Talks and Thoughts here. Welcome to the House of the Dragon Season 1 review here. I did mention in my last video for House of the Dragon that I would be coming out with a full season review now that all the episodes have dropped here. And we're just going to be going through the season as a whole, thoughts on the season and what it means moving forward. But before I get started here, if you're interested in any other season reviews, definitely check the link in the description below for the playlist as well as my tv database and my patreon page and with all that out of the way let's get into the thoughts and the review for house of the dragon season one now house of the dragon season one had a big reputation and some scared fans here game of thrones season eight was a very big disappointment to a lot of people so seeing house of the dragon here this is the first actual spinoff here or spinoff prequel sequel any show outside of the game of thrones universe that is connected with it and a lot of people were scared you know wondering uh season eight was such a downer but we have a new writer and we have a new group here how is this going to play out i actually had a lot of high hopes going in and i think that the pilot did a really great job of assuring the doubters here of making it be a great first season and starting out with a bang here House Targaryen, I should mention as well, is my favorite house in Game of Thrones. It was my favorite. Daenerys was one of my favorite characters. And I just think that they have the biggest backstory and history, of course. Pretty much everything in Westeros since Aegon the Conqueror revolves around the Targaryens. So I think they have so much source material to cover. And this whole uh, House of the Dragon first season covers the Dance of the Dragons, which of course is the big Targaryen civil war. And with the pilot here, just being introduced back into this world was so breathtaking and awesome. I mentioned in my first episode review how just seeing the dragons back on screen, and they were just so beautiful. And being immersed in this world, Game of Thrones, the world building, I think, is the best of any show I've ever seen. Just so much characters and so much to unpack and unravel. And there's so much going on. Unlimited source material with Game of Thrones and the universe. So House of the Dragon, of course, following the Targaryens here, and we get to see at the very start them showing that this is 172 years, or the first events are 172 years before uh, the birth of Princess Daenerys Targaryen and the fall of the Mad King Aerys II. Of course, we all know about the whole situation with Aerys and Daenerys from the Game of Thrones. So really refreshing to see and giving us a definitive time for when these events took place. This is taking place right after uh, we see Jaehaerys I, who is considered by many the best king of all Westeros. He had the most peaceful reign and him naming a successor here. And it really builds the foundation, really early on, of uh, this lineage and line that's going to take shape here. We see him name Viserys as heir over Rhaenys. Rhaenys was the daughter to the eldest son, but because they don't want to have females in line for the succession of the throne, uh, the second oldest son, Balon here, or Jaehaerys' grandson here, Viserys, from his son Balon, would be the next one to inherit the throne, and that is something that is a really big idea for the whole of the first season between Rhaenyra and Aegon here. In the first episode, we get to see this tournament and seeing all these new characters introduced to everyone. Kristen Cole is a big standout. Daemon Targaryen is absolutely crazy. King Viserys is just awesome. We get to meet the small council with Otto. We see uh, younger Rhaenyra and younger Allison, who I think both their actors did a phenomenal job in their roles for this season. And it was just really, really cool to see just being immersed back into this world. And as I said, just so many interesting and unique characters seeing the tournament and seeing Viserys with his first life. Uh, Emma Aaron here, who you can just see he loves so dearly and just such a heartbreaking first episode with uh, her death here. And this was something that really took a big hit on Viserys in the show here. You can just see how distraught they all are. And, you know, his son passing away at birth as well. Just... Very crazy uh, events to start the first episode. And see, in the second episode here, we get to see the idea of who's going to be Viserys' next wife. 
because you know he's got to remarry he's got to produce more children and more heirs and keep the line of succession going you know and Rhaenyra's you know I'm not sure if at this point she's really opposed to it but of course she's like uh declared as heir to the throne at this point at the end of episode one and we see uh you know Corliss here he's having a lot of big tension with Viserys and offering his daughter who's way too young at the time and you know Viserys acknowledges this and at the end of the episode we get Alice and Hightower announced as the queen here or who Viserys is going to marry and you just see this is where the point where Alice and Rhaenyra are going to be separated and it's, it's going to be all chaos here and you just see how distraught Rhaenyra is that her best friend is now going to be marrying her father who is the king and that was just a crazy storyline and seeing Damon here uh, of course still being rogue and having problems with his brother real interesting to see and his little conversation with Otto just so intriguing for this season and something that I think they did really well they did really well at building these characters early on but I guess so another big thing I'm kind of jumping around here throughout the season is did we have enough time to develop with these characters because there was a lot of time jumps in this there was I believe three different time jumps all with different spans some were three years five years ten years so did we have enough time to build with these characters I think yes and no I think that we did a good job of building the foundation for these characters and showing enough of their personality but do we really have time to connect with especially ones that were recasted which were usually the kids uh Renera and Allison got recast and as well as their kids so a little bit tougher to connect with them but I think Viserys and Damon able to connect with them pretty well in they were not recasted at all and then moving back here into episode number three uh, we see here just uh, Damon and Corliss in their battle against the uh, the crab feeder here and uh, a big epic battle that I think a lot of people you know some people liked it and some people didn't because of Damon they said plot armor here um, you know I think that's gonna happen with anything uh, where you know Damon just is indestructible and goes through everyone but I thought it was a really cool scene I can definitely get through a little bit of unbelievability to get there and I really liked that aspect of episode three that was like the main thing in episode three and then pretty much through episode four here uh we see this was I, I call it like the sex episode this is the one where Damon and Rhaenyra start you know fooling around a little bit and start kind of planting those seeds for them getting together which you know still at this time it's like ugh. but you know the history and the lore if you've seen the Targaryens they like being able to keep their bloodline as pure as possible so we see a little bit of that and we see Rhaenyra going off and having fun and uh, trying to you know build herself up and Kristen Cole here kind of gets swerved and we see how just that affects so much here and seeing Allison how you know she's really not too happy with the king you know she just does her thing she doesn't really have a choice and Renary over here is going rogue and uh, Otto has spies and it's just really crazy so much to unpack in this season I also um really like the idea of Renary trying to find a husband here and that's kind of another main thing for like episodes five and six Renary trying to find the rightful guy or the guy who's right for her and ultimately ends up being Lane or Valerian who they kind of set her up with and they both kind of acknowledge that they're doing a duty to the uh, kingdoms here we see at the wedding uh Kristen Cole just snaps on Lenor's lover here and really sets the foundation moving forward uh really crazy to see that and having that all unfold and Lenor's death being staged by Rhaenyra and Damon and just so much that's just going on so much at once following these characters uh the backstabbing the little conversations just going on and we just see each and every episode the planting of this conflict between this family and of course at this point uh Aegon and uh Aemon here and uh Helena all born here uh, and Daron as well not involved in this season but he will be in the next season and we see just all of them. I loved Aemon in this season. 
Eamon, you know, he's so morally wrong, but he is such a badass, man. I love that about Eamon. Aegon, not so much. He's kind of a little uh, piece of shit, so I don't really like Aegon that much, but uh, hopefully he gets a little bit better moving forward. I think his actor is actually a pretty good actor, just don't really care for his character. And a lot of just uh, twists and turns, and you feel for these characters, you hate these characters. They're all morally wrong in some sort of way. And you're like, which side do you choose? I think most people, of course, are on the side of Team Black over Team Green. Uh, the Greens are just, you know, get them out of here. Uh, we are Renera and Damon Stans here. And we see, of course, again, just mentioning Lanor Valerian and sending him off and the Valerians not being Lanor's kids. We kind of see that as Harwin Strong is, you know, involved in this. And I haven't even got to Laris yet. Uh, he is someone who's like a combination of Varys and Littlefinger. Yeah, I don't know what his motives are. Uh, does, is he going to play on both sides? You know, uh, right now he's kind of with the greens, but I could easily see him going away. And then you get the awful scene in season or in uh, episode nine here with, <laughs> with Laris, man. So foul, man. So Laris here, so unpredictable. And he really feels like a combination of Littlefinger and Varys. And you combine their names together and you get Laris who, you know, uh, takes out uh, his father and Harwin gets killed in the aftermath. And uh, Otto Hightower, of course, being removed after spreading these rumors about Rhaenyra and, Har and Harwin's uh, father, Lionel being handed the king for almost 10 years at this point Otto finally sneaking his way back in and we see just just these little pieces that are being put together in this compelling story that you're really invested in each and every week and I really liked seeing just each event something big would happen each week uh my favorite episode actually and I'll probably end up doing a video on it of the episodes for season one ranked was Driftmark here I loved the scene of Aemon claiming Vagar. I just thought the tension in that scene was unmatched throughout this whole season when Allison goes and uh, tries to attack Rhaenyra and, uh, for putting Aemon's eye out. And that was just such a great episode. The tension was at the highest it's ever been. This family's falling apart. And speaking of falling apart, you can see the, t the deterioration of Viserys throughout this entire show. Uh, he just <laughs> freaking loses his mind you know what i mean uh he just you can just see so physically each and every episode he's just losing it because of all the conflict with his family members and he just wants everything to be right and knows like this there's so many problems here going on because of naming Rhaenyra heir to the throne here and it's gonna cause problems later on we see uh Viserys here he's got the uh form of leprosy they said and you can see just his whole face it's like getting melted off and <laughs> actually reminds me of a uh, meme from regular show when uh skips his uh die in the episode free cake uh, that's off topic here so uh if you know you know uh it looks just like uh skips when he's dying in that episode but um I digress uh you see just Viserys falling apart and the Lord of the Tides. Interesting episode here. Vaemon here. And Viserys again bring up this whole idea again of uh, Rhaenyra's bastard children. And line of succession. Who goes where. And this tension in the Seven Kingdoms. And who sides with who. Just building this war. And that's kind of how episode 8 leaves it off here. Just Viserys... And trying to control his family and the tension still being there between Rhaenyra and Team Black and uh, Alice and the Greens. And we see here just uh, Viserys' demise. He gets to meet uh, Aegon III and Viserys as well. So, you know, that was really cool to see him meet his uh, last little kids. But as, uh, you know we see episode nine unfold this is all about the greens uh team green here the green council uh allison of course <laughs> sort of hides viserys's death for a little bit then lets everyone know that uh what he said to her but she kind of takes it in the wrong way and saying that he wanted Aegon to be king and 
trying them trying to find Aegon all episode and Aemon in his jealousy for his brother he's like I'm such a skilled swordsman I fight the uh, largest dragon in the world I should be king you know he kind of implies that but Kristen Cole's like you need to respect your brother and we know he's the kingmaker uh, anyone who's read the books uh, knows that he kind of plays more of a part in talking Aegon into taking the role as king and Aegon doesn't want it but you know when he gets that power and he gets hungry here and we just see just how horrible of a person he is with all his his bastard children now uh, roaming around the streets and just his out of control attitude and him just firing up the crowd firing up the crowd and uh and then rainy's coming out and uh you know showing that it's on it's on and then following that into episode 10 uh the black queen episode a really interesting episode following Rhaenyra and Damon here and we get the scene of of course Aemon and Lucerus which a lot of people are mixed on I think that it would have been better for Aemon to kill Lucerus on purpose instead of on an accident but now that's gonna make blood and cheese so much harder to watch if you guys know blood and cheese a big event that's gonna happen in season two won't spoil anything on that but uh, that's going to be taking a whole different light here because of the circumstances there and just the war it's it's starting it's gonna really pick up in season two i think we're gonna get a lot of big epic battles dragons versus dragons armies and armies going at it who will allegiances lie are they gonna change whose oaths are gonna stay and whose oaths are gonna break who's gonna be on team black and go to team green who's gonna be on team green and go to team black it's gonna be a crazy wild ride and i think that season one was a crazy wild ride i think that this season would be like a nine out of ten season it's like an elite tier season for me and definitely one of my favorite shows for the year i think that house of the dragon definitely calmed a lot of people's nerves who were season eight haters of game of thrones including myself you know db weiss and um uh david benahoff get him get them out of there and get these new writers in here and know what they're doing it also helps that they have source material finished out because i feel like game of thrones really took a, a deep turn when they ran out of source material and had to come up with stuff on their own and just really rushed it so house of the dragon season one like a nine out of ten i think it has a lot of promise i think it's pretty similar to game of thrones season one like very much on the same level i even might prefer house of the dragon season one uh and like I said, just so much to unpack in this video, and I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. And definitely let me know your thoughts on House of the Dragon. I think that it was a really solid first season. I can't wait for season two. Uh, just these characters are really interesting to me, and I love seeing the dragons back on screen. House Targaryen, my favorite family, and I just I love learning about the history of this family. You know, they're kind of messed up in many ways, but they just are so compelling and the most interesting group and the most unpredictable group, I feel like in the whole show so that's gonna do it here for the season one review as i said before check the link in the description below for more uh, house of the dragon uh content as well as other season one reviews here that i have done season one or any other season i should say reviews in the playlist that i have and stay tuned for more house of the dragon uh, related content i also have some game of thrones content on my channel if you want to check that out so yeah that's gonna do it, everyone take care and peace out